Hello everyone and welcome to Dandelion Lessons here on YouTube and it is a snowy and very cold day here. Um, both my husband and I are working from home today which is kind of nice so it's cozy. Um, looking at my window at the bird feeders and there is a beautiful morning dove with her rosy breast um, sitting on top. Um, it's just yeah kind of a cold blustery day and oh that's funny, a grackle just came, which is unusual for this time of year. Anyway, so um, today I wanted to start by reading you something from a book that I really love. And the name of the book is called To Bless the Space Between Us. And it was written by John O'Donohue, who is um, a favorite author of mine. Also a wonderful poet. Um, he died several years ago now. Um, but I recently listened again to his podcast interview with Krista Tippett at On Being. And if you've never listened to Krista Tippett's interviews, um, they're just wonderful. And you can find them wherever you listen to podcasts or also on her website, which is onbeing.org. Um, so anyways, I was listening again. It reminded me of this book. And so I took it down again and I was reading through it last night. And there is one that I want to read to you, and then I'm going to use it as a jump, jumping off point. And so um, this one is called For the Artist at the Start of Day. So I'm just going to read it, and then, and then we'll talk about it when I'm done. May morning be astir with the harvest of night, your mind quickening to the arrows of a new question, your eyes seduced by some unintended glimpse that cut right through the surface to a source. May, these, may this be a morning of innocent beginning when the gift within you slips clear of the sticky web of the personal with its hurt and its hauntings and fixed fortress corners. A morning when you become a pure vessel for what wants to ascend from silence. May your imagination know the grace of perfect danger to reach beyond imitation and the wheel of repetition, deep into the call of all the unfinished and unsolved, until the veil of the unknown yields and something original begins to stir toward your senses and grow stronger in your heart. In order to come to birth in a clean line of form, that claims from time a rhythm not yet heard, that calls space to a different shape. May it be its own force field and dwell uniquely between the heart and the light to surprise the hungry eye and how deftly it fits about its secret loss. So he, he has a beautiful way of saying things and um, sometimes harder to understand than others for me anyways but but this one there are a few a few parts of it that I, I just sort of wanted to touch upon because they have a great deal to do with our creative practice and especially how we practice it here together and um, in a way that especially these lessons um, that is very from our clumsy hearts and from um, a place of unknowing and no expectations and, and some in a, from a place that is about the, the sheer appreciation of our tools and the time we have to spend watching um, color on paper and, and creating beauty in a way that um, has very little to do with us except for we're showing up and, and being the, the, the vehicle, right? Um, the catalyst for it to do its magic. So um, there are also other kinds of lessons that we do here and on Patreon, on my Patreon channel, I have much more structured lessons. I also have dandelion lessons there, but we learn a lot of technique. And so we also do other kinds of work, um, things that are representational, like a landscape or a botanical painting or a painting of a bird. 
Um, and there we have certain expectations, right? Because um, we know what the bird looks like that we want to paint. And so we want it to at least resemble it. Um, it doesn't need to be a, a, cop, a feather by feather copy. We don't, we don't need to do that. That would be for the scientific illustrator. <laughs> but um, so, so there's different kinds of ways that we approach our creative practice. Um, so no matter how we approach it though, we want to approach it from a place of spirit and from a place where we are in the act of creating something new that wasn't there before. And not so much in a place of where we're just trying to imitate or um, do something because someone else does it or um, you know, do it so we can earn money at something or, you know, it, it, that's not why we're here. So we're here to do work of the spirit more than anything else. So I love what he says here. Um, we, you know, um, about be having morning be an innocent beginning when the gift within you slips clear of the sticky web of the personal with its hurt and its hauntings and its fixed for fortress corners, a morning when you become pure vessel for what wants to ascend from silence. And so how do we avoid coming to our practice full of um, the stuff of this world, of our personal struggles and strifes and our busy days how do we come to it clear of that because what he's saying and what i know is that if we can empty our vessel of those things we can fill it with pure inspiration and and creativity and come from a more pure place when we approach our work and so one way to do that is to have a meditation practice and um you know i really love when i'm faithful to having a meditation practice and I'm not always and I let it go and when I do um, I'm usually sorry and then I try to start it up again and and I'll go through it for a while again and then I'll let it go so I'm sure you all had that experience with something too but what I do notice when I when I am faithful to it what a difference it makes because what it does it's not so much about that moment um, and being able to empty our minds at that moment and have this wonderful meditation session, because for me, that never happens. Um, it's constant work for me. Um, but what it does is, is like anything else, when we show up to do something every day, um, at least once a day, and we, we practice it, it becomes something that um, we're aware of throughout our day. And so we tend to be able to empty or let things go, or, or just be an observer instead of being affected. And, and so meditation is really, really good for that. And if you don't have a meditation practice and you would like to try one, there are there's a great app. You can get it on your iPhone or on any phone, I think. And I think you can even get it online, on a computer or on a tablet. And it's called Headspace. And there are many things that you can use on it for free. Um, and then if you want to go deeper into it and, and um, it, it ends up being, there's a yearly fee that ends up being like $7 a month, I think, or something like that. Or you can pay by the month if you want to as well, which is a little more expensive. I think it's like $14 a month. But it's, it's really worth it if you want to bring that kind of practice into your life and you want to be held accountable for it because it reminds you and it's fun. And um, the man who guides you through it um, is just wonderful. And I really, I enjoy his voice it's, um, and I enjoy his approach to things. So that's one way. Um, there are also, you could do local classes. I know where I live, there are many places that offer it. Um, for me, that's not just not going to happen. I'm just not going to you know, be good about getting someplace to do something all the time. So I'm, you know, I, I'm not a good joiner that way. So anyway, so that's one way that we can train ourselves to show up um, to our practice as a pure vessel. Okay, and it obviously, it, it's not something that happens all the time. But when it does happen, it's really special and it makes you want it to happen again. But then he goes into this and he says, may your imagination know the grace of perfect danger 
to reach beyond imitation in the wheel of repetition, deep into the call of all the unfinished and unsolved. And then, and then he goes on from there. And, and this is something um, that I always feel like I want to approach with people that are just beginning their own practice. And they're starting to learn and they're learning from a teacher. So if you're here, you're, you're obviously looking at me as sort of a guide to something that you want to do. And I offer you here um, my perspectives on things and my ways of doing things. And I offer them because they've had such a great benefit to my life and I want other people to have that in their lives. I'm not offering it to create a bunch of people just like me, <laughs> you know. I'm, cr I'm, I'm offering it to teach you tools and techniques that you can take those and practice them here with me and then practice them on your own and then come up with your own unique thing in your own way. So I'm, I'm teaching you how to approach your practice, like how to make it a daily habit, the tools and materials that make it easier for us and make it more pleasant and beautiful. I like to introduce people to new things. Um, the techniques we need to get paint on paper in a satisfying way, you know. And even when I teach how to paint a bird, I don't want your bird to look just like mine. I want it to look like yours, okay? And what I've noticed is there's like a fine line of, of, of respecting intellectual property, I guess I should say. And it's a hard thing to talk about because I am a teacher. And there are many teachers who I've talked to this about, and they, everybody has the same problem. And it's very rare. I've I've rarely encountered it, but when I do, I usually approach it with um, giving a person the benefit of the doubt and just praising their work. So let's say I'm, I'm looking online and I see somebody has posted a picture of a painting that they did directly from a lesson with me on YouTube or on Patreon or something, and... and um, they're turning it into greeting cards and selling it. Well, that's a red flag. That's that's violating intellectual property, okay, because it's my lesson, and I created it, and um, it stays as a lesson. It's something to teach you. It's not something to turn around and take that exact thing and offer it for sale. It's just that's not the purpose of it, and it isn't fair, really. Um, it's not going to hurt me. I mean, you know, but but it's um, but it's just it's not the right energy and the right approach, and so instead, what you do is you take what you learn, and and you and you start to practice and practice, and eventually you come to your own things and your own way, and your own ideas, and that's the beauty of it. And if we if we don't if we stop ahead of that, and like he says, to reach beyond imitation in the wheel of repetition. If, if we reach beyond that, we come to our own place. If we get stuck there, we're always going to be stuck there, you know. And so, um, especially, you know, I, I've i taken online classes from a couple people um, in the past couple years, other watercolor teachers, that I just really wanted to see how they approach things. And I, I learned a lot. I learned, you know, it wasn't necessarily my the way I wanted to do things, but I learned a lot of things that I didn't know before. Um, I'm not going to take those exact lessons and try to make them my own, you know, and I'm also not going to take the paintings that I made from those lessons and and try to try to sell them as my own. Um, I can share them and say, look what I did in so-and-so's class, you know. Um, so that's one thing, and I see it very rarely. It's it's just a rare thing. And usually when I approach someone about it, they're like, oh, geez, I didn't even think about that. You know, I just love it so much. And, and then they understand. Um, and so that's just something that, that I like to bring up now and then because I saw it again the other day, and and um, it was on Facebook, actually. And... Um, you know, it's just, it, 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 it makes, it, I don't know how, how to explain it, but hopefully this is making sense. But anyway, so I, I like that he says this, to reach beyond imitation and the wheel of repetition. We learn by imitation, we all do, um, and we learn by repetition, but there comes a point when we do that enough that we can break off on our own and, and let it be what it is. And every time we do it, it will become more our own. And that's that's a beautiful thing. And I've seen it with so many of you, especially my patrons. 
um, on my Patreon, who I see their work all the time, I just see things becoming your own and you're, you're putting your own twist on things and it's just so exciting to me to see that. So anyways, so then, um, I love this. In order to come to birth in a clean line of form that claims from time a rhythm not yet heard, that calls space to a different shape, may it be its own force field and dwell uniquely between the heart and the light to surprise the hungry eye by how deftly it fits about its secret loss. So I'm not sure about this part, but I but I understand what he's saying here. He's kind of taking us through something and and giving us permission to be an individual and to have our own voice and to call it beautiful. <coughs> so I really like that. Anyways, I just wanted to read this to you. Um, I think um, the message that, that I want to be taken from here today is that we all come to this space to do our creative practice. That's why we're here. And especially with dandelion lessons, um, we come to this place, we do these intuitive works you know, using beautiful materials, being inspired by perhaps, you know, a tarot card or, or something like that, where we have a jumping off point. We're not copying this card. We're just looking at it in inspiration and we're seeing the things, the images that it brings up in us, right? And then we might say, oh, I would really, I think I'm going to use blues and oranges and indigos in this painting, something like that. But we're really coming from an intuitive place and we're having no expectations of what happens on our painting. And it, it will be beautiful no matter what we do. And then the next part is that we share it with someone. So we either pass it on and teach someone else, right? Or, um, or we just put it in the mail to someone and brighten their day. Or we keep it in our in our, in our handbag, and when we meet someone who might be having a hard time, we can give it to them. Wrap it up pretty and keep it in your bag and just give it to someone somewhere. It seems like they might need a smile, you know? So dandelion lessons are really special that way. So today um, I'm going to use, uh, I've got a piece of four by six um, hot press watercolor paper. Um, and I've got my selection of all stars. These are some of my favorite paints that I've collected in one box. This beautiful, beautiful wooden paint box from Nature Sketches. Um, Anita's husband makes these and they're just gorgeous. I love mine so much. So I've got my all stars and, and I would like you to use your favorite paints too. It doesn't matter what they are. Whatever paints you have are the paints you should use. And so I am going to, as always, um, turn off the camera for a minute, sort of center myself, put some beautiful music on, and I'm going to create a painting. And I'm going to think about, in my mind, I want to think about clearing that space within me of all of the daily um, things that weigh on me and sort of um, emptying the vessel so the vessel can be filled again. I'm going to have it in my mind while I'm painting. And it may not look anything like that, but it's it's my intention in, in my heart when I'm painting it. And then I will come back to talk some more.
Okay, so this is almost dry and it's really lovely and I had no idea um, that this is what I was going to end up with, but it's sort of this magical being, right? <clears throat> Look at the energy coming out of her head. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, anyways, yeah, can you see her? You never know. You just never know what you're going to get. That's why I love these so much. So I hope this lesson made some sense to you. I hope you enjoyed um, John O'Donohue's beautiful um, blessing. And you might want to look at um, this book for other other things. It has all sorts of, um, for your for states of heart, for callings, for homecomings, for thresholds, um, beyond endings. Um, yeah, it's really a lovely book for new babies. It's lovely. Um, yeah, so I, I just wanted to read that to you and it, it brought some things up and I've been wanting to talk about that. And, and because, you know, I, I come here um, to share and, um, and, and with, with respect for all who come here and, and take, um, you know, and take this time with me. And I guess, I, I mean, I just ex expect the same from other people when, when they watch and, and when they take these lessons as their own and, and, and begin to create and learn. And I'd say 99% of the time, that's what happens. Um, and it's a shame to even have to mention that imitation thing, but, but it's just there and it's good to talk about it. And, and the thing is, is it doesn't serve us, you know. Um, we, we learn by imitation. And then we want to take it and make it our own. And um, yeah, it's, it's really as simple as that. You know, it's as simple as that. So I hope you'll have a, a wonderful rest of your week. I'll be back next week with an Artist for Everyone video. And if you haven't joined us on Patreon, you might want to take a look. Um, if you just go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Katira Ewing, or you could just search for me once you get there. Um, you can take a look at our space. I don't know how much you can see because most of it, almost all of it is um, for paid um, patrons. It's $5 a month and you get three videos a week and um, a beautiful community space. You can share your work and get feedback. And um, it's just, I'm just blown away by everybody there all the time. It's really wonderful. And if you're on Patreon and you're not sharing your work, I really encourage you to do so. It, it's just such a good experience. It's good for all of us. We all get inspired from one another. And um, please, you know, feel free. You can also, if you're uncomfortable sharing your work, you can also send it to me by email. And you can message me on Patreon um, for that. So anyways, I hope you all having a great day. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. And um, I look forward to hearing your thoughts and comments. And also um, your thoughts about how you approach your creative practice as an empty vessel. And how, how you manage that. And, you know, probably like me and... Like everybody else, it doesn't happen all the time. But when it does, it's a really special thing, and, and beautiful things can happen. Um, and I love this intuitive work for that reason, because we are an empty vessel when we come to this paper. And we, we can really be an empty vessel, and we can just let the paint and the, the brush and the paper guide us um, with an intention in our heart and see what happens. It's really, it's really magical. You can't go wrong. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much again. Take care. Mm -hmm.